डायरेक्टर रिसर्च एंड साइंटिफिक ऑपरेशन विथ कैर इनोवेशन पुणे महाराष्ट्र यूल बी डेलिवरिंग लेक्चर ऑन इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एच पी एल सी एंड एल सी एम एस लिक्विड क्रोमोटोग्राफी मास श्रीवास्तव हेज अ पी एच डी फ्रॉम वैजलिन यूनिवर्सिटी फ्रॉम पी एच डी इन बायोसेंसर टेक्नोलॉजी हिज एक्टिव एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च इंक्लूड्स बायोसेंसर एंड पॉइंट ऑफ केयर डायग्नोस्टिक्स Uh, he has designed various biosensor utilizing electrochemical FET and uh, impedance based and optical transducer based sensors suitable for a uh, resource uh, limited setting. Uh, he has also made sensors using papers and uh, plastic channel based microfluids, uh, which are rapid, sensitive, specific, easy to use, and uh, easily accessible in uh, remote setting. He has also uh, served as an assistant professor at the Allahabad Agricultural Institute. Uh, he has uh, served national postdoc fellow at the uh, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology. Uh, he joined as uh, chief scientist at the Fast Sense Diagnostics Limited uh, for a period of uh, nine months, and he is uh, working in Bitcare uh, for the past two years, uh, three years. So, with this uh, short introduction, I. Uh, Welcome, Dr. Soros Kumar Srivastava, to deliver his uh, lecture. The floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. So, the topic that we'll cover today is, uh, um, in a broader sense, is chromatography, and more specifically, we'll talk about uh, HPLC and uh, LCMS. Uh, as a whole so we'll discuss the principal instrumentation and application of the technique so uh not changing slides yeah so uh, basically chromatography comes from two words that is chroma which means color and graphy which means to write so chromatia uh, chromatography as a whole uh, means color writing the technique was first carried out by a russian botanist um, michel swart in 1903 so what exactly he did was that he eluted a petroleum ether extract uh, on a column which was filled with a stationary phase of uh, calcium carbonate and he used liquid hydrocarbons as mobile phase there he separated three components from that uh, uh, mixture that he has uh, one was xanthophyll which was yellow in color cretinoid orange in color and chlorophyll that was green in color and this is how this whole process of uh, chromatography started so the definition of chromatography would be that uh, chromatography is a purification and analytical technique or a separation technique uh, say suppose you have a sample which is made up of uh, different components and you want to isolate or separate all the components uh, nicely so what uh, you will do you will use a column chromatography and using this column chromatography you will be able to separate the components based on uh, various factors like affinity or uh, Uh, size or uh, charge so there are uh, these factors that govern the separation now uh, before we go further i will read the full uh, definition so chromatography is a technique for separating mixtures into their components to analyze identify purify and or or to quantify the mixture or component so basically you can analyze it you can also identify it by using different kind of detectors 
you can purify it so if you have a mixture you want to separate it out and uh, purify it then you can use it and you can also use it to quantify to know how much quantity of each component is present in the mixture now uh, there are some basic terminologies that i want to talk about because i would be using them uh, during the lecture so first is mobile phase so mobile phase is uh, a solvent that flows through the supporting medium through the column which takes the mixture along with it and helps to separate the mixture on the column then stationary phase stationary phase is a layer or a coating of supporting medium that interacts with analyte so the mixture that you have will go and interact with the um, uh, stationary phase that is either filled in the column or coated on a plate in the form of layer so it will go and interact and it will um, get separated on the stationary phase and then eluted by the mobile phase out of the column or uh, on the plate then uh, supporting medium so supporting medium is a solid structure on which the stationary phase is bound or coated so it could be in case of tlc it could be a flat plate in case of a column it could be a glass column or in case of uh, coil or gc it could be a coil in which the stationary phase would be filled now before uh, let's let's see the principle again the slides are not open. yeah so now um, uh, basically we'll talk about the principles so uh, the principle of chromatography is physical method of separation that distributes the component to separate between two phases that is the mobile phase and liquid phase in definite direction then substances are separated on the basis of their differential distribution between the two phases third principle is substances will move with the mobile phase at different rate depending upon their partition or distribution coefficient so here in the figure that we see uh, there are uh, this is the spot where the mixture was spotted and these are the three component that was present in the mixture this is an example of thin layer chromatography and it got separated here similarly if we want to separate that same mixture on a column chromatography so it will be put from the top and uh, along with organic solvent or the mobile phase and here again it will be separated so in case of uh, tlc the biggest uh, molecule will be at the bottom whereas in case of uh, H, uh, column chromatography the biggest molecule will be on the top here in this case this was the product c the orange molecule that was bigger in size so it stayed behind the direction of flow in column chromatography is from top to bottom whereas in this tlc it is from bottom to top now based on the stationary phase or the mobile phase uh, uh, and uh, the principle we can classify chromatography in three ways so first we'll discuss uh, on the basis of mechanism of separation so on the basis of mechanical uh, mechanism of separation uh, chromatography can be classified in four types first one is uh, adsorption chromatography that works on the principle of adsorption here the analyte molecule adsorbs on the resin like for example affinity chromatography or hplc so what happens is um, in case of affinity chromatography when you have to isolate a particular component or an analyte so what you do is you fill the column uh, with silica immobilized with that um, so for example you want to isolate a protein so you have some antibodies against the protein or analyte you have antibodies against the analyte so you immobilize the 
antibody onto the silica matrix and you fill the column and then you pass the analyte molecule so the analyte molecule will bind to its specific antibodies and they will get stuck in the column and then you will change the condition of the column by using some acid mild acid or ph change that will interrupt the uh, antibody antigen reaction and release the uh, antigen so it could be eluted out of the column the second type is partition chromatography so in partition chromatography the separation of uh, uh, the separation is on the basis of uh, sample partition uh, basically due to its solubility in the mobile liquid phase so the more the particle will be soluble in the liquid phase the more easier it will get separated and uh, the less soluble it is, it will get stuck on the uh, resin of the column. Then the third one is ion exchange chromatography. So in ion exchange chromatography, there is a exchange of ion that is the ions that uh, ions are attached with the resins of the stationary phase and the ions in the sample or the analyte to be isolated, it goes and it attaches itself over there and replaces the ion that were already existing on the stationary phase. So uh, by this method, they get stuck on the stationary phase and later on uh, that can be isolated or separated by changing the media, uh, by changing the condition of the liquid phase and separating it out. Next uh, classification on the basis of mechanism is size exclusion chromatography. So in size exclusion chromatography, the separation is on the basis of size of the component to be isolated. So the bigger, um, bigger is the size of the component, it will come the last. It is also called as gel permeable chromatography as and is uh, mainly used when you have to separate or isolate any conjugate from the mixture. So in that case, you use uh, size exclusion chromatography. Then uh, chromatography can also be classified on the basis of uh, mobile phase. So uh, mobile phase can be uh, liquid, mobile phase can be gaseous or mobile phase can also be supercritical fluid. Now in liquid chromatography, the mobile phase used is liquid as the name suggests. For example, uh, normal chromatography, reverse phase chromatography or hydrophobic, hydrophilic, ion exchange, FPLC and so on. Whereas in gas chromatography, the mobile phase that is used is gas. In uh, supercritical uh, fluid, uh, chromatography, the mobile phase that is used is a supercritical fluid. Supercritical fluid is a substance that above its critical temperature and critical pressure uh, can exist in uh, both forms. So in liquid or gas form, here in this case, no distinct uh, liquid or gaseous phase exists. So basically it can be in any form, it can be in uh, mixture form, so half of it can be gas, half of it can be liquid. Uh, an example of this uh, could be um, uh, carbon dioxide, so that is very oftenly used as a supercritical fluid for uh, supercritical fluid chromatography. Uh, then uh, in principle, chromatography can also be classified on the basis of stationary phase. Uh, stationary phase can be solid or liquid, but uh, uh, yeah, that's that's a uh, very vague type of classification. That's why I didn't list it, but uh, I still wanted to mention it. Uh, now, the third cl classification of chromatography is on the basis of the shape of the chromatographic bled bed. So. Uh, Chromatographic bed is basically where the resins are present or immobilized, uh, which uh, I told earlier that it could be a plate on which it is mobilized or it could be a column or it could be a coil in which it is filled. So 
uh, that is there. So based on that, uh, also we can classify chromatography. So first one is planar chromatography. So planar chromatography here, uh, uh, the reason or the separation, uh, the reason is on the separation bed where the separation has to be taken place. Uh, so basically it's on a plane surface. Uh, for example, uh, paper chromatography or uh, uh, thin layer chromatography. So here liquid molecules are basically dried on the planar surface. And uh, in case of thin layer chromatography, silica gel is dried on glass plate or aluminum surface to make this kind of planar surface for planar chromatography. As you, here you can see, so this is the uh, stationary phase that is immobilized here and this is the mobile phase and the uh, direction of flow is in this direction. Now uh, next uh, classification is column chromatography. So in this uh, uh, in column chromatography the stationary phase is packed or filled in a column. For example in high pressure chromatography or uh, ion exchange chromatography uh, it is uh, filled in a metal uh, cylinder or in case of uh, gas chromatography, it is basically filled in uh, coil. So this could further be classified as uh, packed column chromatography that is used in uh, uh, HPLC or uh, tubular column chromatography that is uh, often used in uh, gas chromatography. Now, then, uh, so uh, now let's see what are the different kind of chromatographies or different types of chromatographies. So basically, um, there are uh, eight to 10 types of chromatographies. Uh, first one is normal phase chromatography. So in normal phase chromatography, the stationary phase that is used is polar and uh, the mobile phase that is used in non-polar. Then the next one is reverse phase chromatography. So as the name suggests, reverse phase is opposite of uh, normal phase. So in this, the stationary phase that is used is non-polar, whereas the mobile phase that is used is polar. Then hydrophobic interaction. So basically hydro by the term hydrophobic, what we mean is uh, water heating. So hydro is water and phobic is heating. So, um, um, so the uh, type of chromatography here is uh, that the component that has to be isolated should be hydrophobic, whereas uh, in hydrophilic, it should be water loving. So it should be uh, readily dissolved in water. Then uh, ion exchange chromatography. So basically ion exchange chromatography is when um, uh, the stationary phase is already mobilized with uh, a particular ion and the mixture that you want to separate has uh, ion that you want to isolate and it could replace this uh, ion that is present on the stationary phase. So what it will do is it will replace the ion that is present on the stationary phase and get attached by itself. And later, when you change the condition of the solvent or the mobile phase, it will get eluted. Next is fast protein liquid chromatography. So that is used for uh, isolation of uh, uh, mixtures of protein. So basically, if you produce some protein in bacteria or uh, you have a mixture of protein and you want to isolate or separate all the protein and quantify it, then you will be using fast protein liquid chromatography. Then uh, size exclusion chromatography, it uh, does the separation based on size. The larger the uh, size of the component, it will, the um, larger will be the retention time and it will come in the end. Then affinity chromatography is uh, basically, uh, you use the affinity of uh, component that you want to isolate to fix it on the column or to hold it or catch it on the column, anchor it on the column, and then you change the condition and isolate it. 
then supercritical fluid uh, is when you use uh, supercritical liquid like uh, carbon dioxide to do the isolation then uh, gas chromatography here uh, the mobile phase is gas and you use a gaseous mobile phase to isolate uh, gaseous components on uh, a coiled column then paper chromatography is basically paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography are sim uh, similar in uh, nature it planar chromatography uh, just the substrate or the matrix that is used in this case on paper chromatography it's normal cellulose paper whereas in thin layer chromatography it's silica deposited on uh, aluminium or glass plate so now uh, uh, let's talk about HPLC in detail. So HPLC is uh, high performance liquid chromatography. This technique is used to separate or identify or quantify uh, components from a mixture of components. Say, suppose I have a mixture of component which has uh, different types of components in it. So to isolate or separate a single component from a mixture of component or to identify uh, the molecule or phyto compound or uh, something else or chemical then we will use uh, 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 HPLC. So HPLC is a type of liquid chromatography in uh, in HPLC the mobile phase that is used is liquid and it is called as high performance liquid chromatography as well because uh, the resolution power of HPLC is very high. Resolution power here means uh, the ability to distinguish between two particles and it is due to the reason that it is most preferred separation method nowadays in labs because it, ha it can really uh, separate components, one component from the other component very clearly. HPLC uh, purifies on the basis of polarity of the component where polarity is uh, the tendency of a molecule to like or dislike water. So hydrophilic or hydrophobic um, molecule. If the molecule is polar then likes water and it's hydrophilic in nature while if uh, the molecule is hydrophobic or non-polar it is not water level so that is the basic principle on which uh, hplc works uh, in hplc a very high pressure is applied for a rapid separation of the component the pressure usually that is applied is between 1000 to 4000 psi uh, so technically uh, LC is uh, basically liquid chromatography and HPLC they are all the same the only difference here is to increase the efficiency of a liquid column a high pressure is applied and when this high pressure is applied the uh, system becomes HPLC now uh, before, before we talk about the theory of HPLC, I'll uh, also talk about the, so uh, let's, let's see uh, what are the components of HPLC. So um, stationary phase is uh, the component that is filled in the column. So, or I'll take it up later. I'll, I'll discuss about this later in a more frame way. Uh, we'll, we'll first talk about the theory of HPLC. So, uh, the HPLC is basically based on the Van Demter equation. And uh, Van Demter equation is HETP is equal to A plus B by mu plus uh, C 
s plus cm times mu so hetp is basically the height equivalent to theoretical plate and its uh, minimum height required for equal distribution of uh, the analyte between the stationary phase and the mobile phase uh, here a is the eddy diffusion or the multi path effect uh, b is the um, longitudinal diffusion uh, c is the mass transfer rate and mu is the flow rate of the mobile phase so uh, now i will elaborate what exactly these components mean so eddy diffusion or multi path effect is basically the as the name suggests that there will be multiple path that are available in a column or uh, a plate due to which pre broadening will occur so what this means here is uh, for example if you have a column that is filled with stationary phase of varying size a single analyte will have uh, different path or different uh, ways through which it can move from the top of the column to the uh, bottom of the column so these different um, uh, paths that it has this is due to interparticular spaces that are created when the column is packed thus this will cause is uh, this peak broadening because a few particles will uh, take the shortest path and will come out uh, first so as soon as the first drop of a single component comes out the peak starts to build and it will keep on building unless and until the last part uh, comes out from the uh, column now next is uh, longitudinal diffusion so in longitudinal diffusion the mobile phase is dis uh, diffused longitudinally thereby causing turbulence effect that is uh, there would be a higher concentration of solute in the middle whereas a uh, lower concentration at the end because when liquid flows uh, it it tries to um, go from the center because uh, at the side it will have interaction with the wall uh, interaction with the stationary phase but in the center it will only have interaction with the stationary phase and it will tend to move faster so in liquid phase this uh, diffusion is less but in gaseous phase the diffusion is more thus uh, in the case of hplc this factor will be negligible now next is uh, the mass transfer so mass transfer rate depends on three factors that is uh, affinity between the stationary phase and the analyte affinity between the mobile phase and the analyte and the flow rate of the mobile phase so basically low flow rate gives good resolution that is good separation whereas high flow rate gives a faster resolution faster separation but the resolution is low so now uh, before we talk about the um, types of hplc i'll quickly tell you about the Uh, stationary phase and uh, sample and other things that is used in uh, hplc so uh, stationary uh, stationary phase in hplc there is a column which is a tube like structure that is filled with a solid absorbent material that is tightly packed uh, this tight packaging of the column is very crucial and uh, very very crucial for effective separation so if it is not uh, tightly packed then it will uh, cause disturbance in the separation and uh, um, the separation will not be clear uh, silica is an example of a hydrophilic solid absorbent material that is used in uh, normal phase splc while uh silica modified with uh, carbon 18 which is uh, 18 carbon long chain is a hydrophobic uh, uh, stationary phase that is used in uh, reverse phase hplc 
so both the sample and the mobile phase passes through this column and uh, the grain size so basically the particle size of this uh, silica column uh, this is usually in the range of 3 to 5 micrometer in diameter so that is very crucial that uh, depending upon the component that you want to separate uh, this uh, column is chosen and the grain size of the silica matrix is chosen according to that uh, according to the component that you want to isolate now uh, next is sample so sample in principle for uh, hplc could be anything it could be like blood or bacterial toxin or fungi toxin or any mixture of proteins or some uh, phyto compounds or plant extracts the next thing is uh, the mobile phase so uh, the mobile phase uh, is a liquid in hplc that consists of approximately 90 percent water and uh, 10 percent of uh, organic solvent um, which has uh, affinity for uh, the component that has to be isolated now this mobile phase is hydrophilic as the water content here is more later in further stages uh, the water content is reduced to create a gradient a concentration gradient so that uh, the organic solvents organic uh, compounds can also be eluted out of the column completely so basically when you start um, column first you put a hydrophilic uh, liquid phase so 90 percent water and 10 percent of uh, organic solvent and then later on you keep on increasing uh, the organic solvent and reducing the water component such that uh, the uh, organic component that are uh, present in the mixture that you want to separate can also be eluted from the column nicely now uh, types of high performance liquid chromatography so basically depending upon the relative polarity of the solvent and the stationary phase there are two variants uh, one is uh, normal phase high performance liquid chromatography and the other one is reverse phase uh, hplc so in uh, normal phase hplc it utilizes a polar absorbent substance and a non-polar elute whereas in reverse phase it uh, utilizes a non-polar absorbent surface and a polar elute and then uh, in normal phase polar substances in the mixture stick to polar absorbent and the non-polar uh, then the non-polar and hence the polar substances will leave the column first so since uh, the polar sol uh, polar substances have bound to the polar absorbent and the non-polar absorbents are free roaming with the mobile phase so they will come out of the column first whereas uh, the polar absorbent will be recovered later by changing the uh, mobile phase similarly um, on the contrast in uh, reverse phase uh, attraction between the non-polar component in the mixture and the non-polar absorbent will hold up the non-polar component that are present in the component uh, mixture and the polar molecules that are present will leave the column first with the polar uh, liquid phase. So reverse phase HPLC is uh, most commonly used in uh, all the labs. Uh, this is a very, um, um, uh, how to say, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very frequently used method. Now, uh, we'll talk about the flow chart. Let's discuss uh, the instrumentation and the block diagram of HPLC. Uh, coming to different parts of HPLC, instrument uh, first we'll discuss about uh, uh, the solvent reservoirs so basically if you can follow the cursor these are the solvent reservoirs so solvent reservoir is basically used to 
uh, store the solvent in HPLC. It is uh, uh, basically in two, uh, of two types. So uh, one solvent reservoir that is used is uh, binary system, whereas the other one is quaternary system. So binary system consists of two bottles, that is reservoir one, uh, solvent reservoir one and solvent reservoir two, whereas the quaternary system has four bottles or four reservoirs. So in HPLC, the solvent used are HPLC grade solvents, which do not have any foreign particle or impurities. This is uh, uh, made sure so that it does not block the column because if there is any impurity, it will go and further block the column. After the uh, solvent reservoir is the degasser. So uh, degasser is basically used to um, remove the gases or air that is present in the mobile phase or solvent phase. This degassing is basically done using vacuum pump and degassing gives better separation. So if various gases or air are trapped in the mobile phase, what will happen is it will go into the main column and it will uh, cause hindrance in separation and it will make air pockets, which will cause a uh, disruption in the pressure that is applied from behind. Next is uh, ves mixing vessel or uh, solvent mixer. So uh, solvent mixture is basically used to mix the solvent coming from two binary source or the four uh, quaternary source in the system. So basically to give a quick uh, recap of this. So what we uh, learned earlier that the solvent that is used here contains 90% of water and 10% of organic solvent. So solvent one, you will fill water and solvent two, you will fill uh, the organic solvent. Then they both will get degassed and then in the ratio that you have already uh, fixed that you want to mix in 90, into 90 is to 10 ratio. So it will get mixed here in the mixing vessel. So after the mixing vessel uh, comes the pump. So HPLC pumps are uh, usually two types of HPLC pumps are used. One is a constant pressure pump that will give a uh, constant pressure, but uh, in constant pressure pump, the flow rate may change and hence a better separation is not achieved. The other uh, pump is constant flow pump and here a constant flow is provided. Generally, uh, we use a constant flow of around one ml per minute and uh, the pressure may vary here and this gives a very good separation. Now, uh, before I move further, there is a very common problem uh, that is faced in HPLC, which is due to back pressure. Now, there are two types of back pressure. One is low back pressure and the other one is high back pressure. Low back pressure occurs in new columns. And uh, basically we are trying to, um, uh, when we uh, change a new column, the new column is clean. It has no obstruction or no, uh, uh, no dirt in the column. So it is very clean. So when you put, when you apply pressure, it leaks out. Whereas uh, leaks out and uh, this, this thing is called as low back pressure. Whereas high back pressure, uh, what happens is it usually happens with old uh, columns. So due to frequent uses of the column, the column often gets blocked. And when you apply pressure, it applies a back pressure. Um, and this uh, back pressure causes um, disruption in separation. So to avoid uh, the scenario of back pressure, uh, what we usually do is we put a pre-column. This pre-column or guard column is used to protect the analytical column. So analytical column is the final column that is used for uh, the separation. So uh, basically we put the guard column to 
uh, guard uh, the liquid phase that is going further. So what it does is guard column filters the mobile phase and removes any contaminants that are present in it. After the guard column is the sample injector, sample injector port. So sample injector is basically used to inject the sample uh, to be purified. So basically the mixture of component is inserted here. Uh, sample injector can be of three types depending upon the component that we want to use. So first one is septum injector. Here, what we do is we inject the sample using syringe through a auto sealing septum. Then uh, the other uh, sample injector is stop flow sample, stop flow septum less injector. So as the name suggests, here we stop the flow of the mobile phase. Then we increase the, uh, then we inject the sample using a valve and then we close the valve and then we start the flow again. The third type of uh, sample injector is micro volume sampling injector. So here a very higher accuracy is achieved because the type of injection we do here is loop injection. So we first fill the loop with the component and then we change the valve such that uh, the incoming liquid medium is uh, directed through this uh, loop taking the sample along with it. After uh, the sample injection port, we have a pressure gauge to monitor the pressure that is uh, uh, going on the column. And uh, further that we have a analytical column. So analytical column is a tube like structure that is tightly packed with small particle um, of stationary phase, which are typically in the size of 3 to 20 micron, depending upon the uh, type of component and nature of component that needs to be isolated. And uh, these particles have the property, should have the property to bear pressures somewhere in the range of 14,000 to 15,000 PSI. Further to the analytical column, we have a um, uh, detector system. So the role of this detector system is to monitor the component that are uh, coming out of the column to identify them and to analyze them. So depending upon what kind of uh, use you want to put this HPLC instrument to, you decide the detector and uh, you use it. So. So what we discussed was pump, then injector, then the column, then the detector. And finally, after the detector is the recorder where the final results are displayed for further use. Now, uh, here's a quick recap what we learned so far. So first HPLC pump. So this HPLC pump forces the mobile phase through the column at much higher velocity than the gravity flow so this is the pump that applies a pressure that goes into the uh, column on the liquid uh, mobile phase. Then these pumps can be of different type. So uh, usually there are four types of um, HPLC pump. One is pneumatic, syringe type. Then we have reciprocating or uh, hydraulic amplifier. So these are four types of uh, pump that can be utilized in uh, HPLC. Then uh, multi-head pumps with two or more reciprocating uh, pistons are widely used nowadays. So what is multi-head uh, uh, pumps? So basically multi-head pumps are usually used to provide a continuous flow. Uh, nowadays, uh, people are using more frequently the micro volume sampling injector and that injector requires a loop injection. So for loop injection, a continuous flow of uh, liquid phase is required and hence a multi head pump is uh, utilized that has two pistons that are uh, working in reciprocating uh, direction. So when one piston is 
pushing the liquid the other piston is filling up the uh, liquid in the syringe and then uh, when this uh, syringe will go pushing the liquid onto the column the other uh, syringe with uh, will be filling the liquid from uh, reservoir then uh, these pumps are designed in order to maintain a stable flow rate uh, we do not want to have a pulsation in terms of flow rate because if there is a pul uh, pulsation in terms of flow rate that will cause disturbance in purification whereas uh, variation in uh, pressure is still uh, tolerable compared to the variation is in flow rate usually a flow range of uh, 0 0.01 to 10 ml per minute is used in hplc now hplc injector so uh, it is basically used to inject the liquid sample which is in the range of 0.1 to 100 ml of volume under high pressure uh, it the property of the HPLC injector should be that it should provide a minimum peak broadening or uh, band broadening as we call uh, it should also produce a very minimum of flow disruption so basically when you are switching valve or you are uh, um, doing low in, uh, injection loop injection you should cause a minimum disturbance in the flow because if the flow gets disrupted again the flow rate will change and there will be uh, ineffective separation so here is a diagram of the injector so here you insert the needle and you inject the solution and once that is injected you turn the knob down to uh, let the flow start now uh, HPLC columns. So uh, basically, uh, in HPLC, we use smooth bore stainless steel heavy walled glass tubings. Uh, so it can be made up of stainless steel, or we can also use a very heavy walled glass tubing in which the stationary phase is filled tightly. Uh, they are available in different sizes varying from 3 to 20 microns uh, which is mostly used in uh, analytical separation uh, for larger particle size um, we we use a larger uh, size pad column for larger particle size separation silica gel is uh, the most common uh, most commonly used packaging material whereas in uh, the other chromatography in other hplc uh, where we need hydrophobic silica we use uh, uh, a carbon chain of uh, 18 carbons and we mat uh, we matrix it with the silica gel so that is c18 silica that is used to pack those columns now hplc detector so hplc detector as uh, the name shows it's basically to monitor the elute uh, that leaves the column. It produces a electronic signal or a readout uh, proportional to the concentration of each separated component. Uh, detector should have the following qualities. So uh, it is crucial in trace analysis. It has a very high sensitivity a uh, very quick response uh, time it simplifies this quantitation so basically it there should be a ready reference to, to which uh, the uh, component that is coming out the retention time and other factors that we get from the graph can be compared easily with the reference chart and the component can be identified uh, it should be insensitive to changes in solvent flow rate and temperature so this is because we use uh, diff uh, different solvents with uh, varying concentration of polarity so in the beginning we use a uh, hydrophilic solvent and at a later stage we use hydrophobic solvent so if the detector is not uh, 
um, or if the detector is sensitive to this change of solvent then uh, every change of solvent will give a peak and that will cause ineffective separation then uh, it should be independent of any changes in the flow rate as well as temperature because it could be that you start the experiment in the morning and by the afternoon it becomes hot and you get ineffective separation so that's why the detector should be in, insensitive to temperature flow rate and uh, the solvent now there are uh, many kind of detectors spectrophotometers so the basic principle of spectrophotometer is uh, it measures the absorbance of light and the detection limit that uh, it can go up to is in nanograms. So basically the condition for this is that the analyte that has to be measured must be UV or visible light accepting. So the analyte must absorb the UV or visible light. Then fluorometer which measures uh, fluorescence and it can the detection limit can go up to pico to nanogram here then light must flows then electrochemical detectors electrochemical detector usually measures oxidized or reduced analyte so here also the detection limit can go up to picogram to nanogram uh, usually catecholamines are used for uh, uh, catecholamines are the analyte which uh, by which for which the electrochemical detectors are used. Then uh, refractometer, it basically measures the changes in refractive index. Uh, the level of detection or the limit of detection here is in micrograms and it is used for the direction of most component which are uh, uh, to be detected in a relatively low sensitivity. So the sensitivity of the refractometer is very low. Then comes mass spec. So mass spec detects iron after separation by mass uh, to charge ratio. And it can go up to femtogram to nanogram. And a light must be converted to ionized form. So basically, before we do a mass spec, then light is converted into um, ionized form and then it is detected by uh, calculating the mass to charge ratio and then referencing it on a, a reference table. Now uh, here we'll quickly see how the HPLC work. So uh, this is the HPLC setup. These are the uh, solvents. So this is a binary solvent system then this is the pump the mixture the injector and uh, this is the column and here is a detector so the stationary phase the phase remains fixed in the column uh, it could be anything it could be c18 hydrophobic column or silica hydrophilic column mobile phase carries the sample through the stationary phase at it moves through the column so here the sample has been injected which was not there in uh, the previous one so now the sample has been injected and the um, hplc process has been started now this uh, sample has started moving and the uh, mobile phase has reached uh, the column so we see a small line here this is the chromatogram uh, which represent the whole process that is going on in HPLC. As soon as the mixture enters the analytical column, it starts to separate and we start to see some peaks uh, of the component that was dissolved in liquid, uh, liquid uh, mobile phase and has come to detector. Further, this separation is going on and we can clearly see the band these bands will be further separated as we can see here and now the bands are leaving the column one by one first uh, 
component has left the column and into the detector. So we see the first peak. The second component see the second peak. So if we calculate the area under this peak, then we will get the amount of the quantity of uh, component A that was present in the component mixture. By calculating the area of this peak, we'll know the amount or quantity of the second component in the mixture and uh, so on. So now the final component has left and you can see the final peak. Now, uh, LCMS. So LCMS uh, basically is a type of uh, um, uh, is a variation of uh, HPLC with a um, um, mass spec. So here the detector that is used is mass spec and uh, uh, it, it is basically an analytical te uh, technique that combines the separation capability of uh, liquid column or uh, HPLC if it is attached to a L HPLC with the mass analysis capability of mass spectrometer. So HPLC basically separates the mixture into multiple component while mass spec provides the structural identity of the uh, individual component with a high molecular specificity and uh, detection sensitivity. So mass spec uh, um, in principle is an analytical technique that measures mass to charge ratio of a charged particle or a charged ion. So what we do, uh, the component that is separated, so we charge them by bombarding them with uh, electron and proton. So we, before it enters the mass spec, we uh, charge them and then um, mass spec measures the uh, mass to charge ratio of those charged particles. So mass spec uses basically an electric or a magnetic field to manipulate the motion of the ion that is produced from the analyte of interest to detect this charge to mass to charge ratio. The mass spec uh, or the mass spectrum can be used to determine the mass of the analyte uh, their elemental uh, composition, their isotopic composition and uh, or to elute the chemical structure or elucidate the chemical structure of the sample. So you can also uh, uh, do elemental analysis and you can also uh, find out the chemical structure of the sample. So uh, a list is prepared with uh, the mass to charge ratio and the, uh, the component that you get out of your column that is um, reference to a reference list that is already there and the particle is identified directly. So here is the whole setup. So here is the HPLC part and this is the mass spec part. So as soon as the component leaves the HPLC column here, it gets into LCMS uh, interface ion source and here the particles get ionized. Once the particle get ionized, they go into the uh, mass spec chamber and here the particles are deflected as per uh, their charge with the help of uh, electronic field or a magnetic field. And at the end, they fall on the detector and wherever they fall, the mass to charge ratio corresponding to that point is recorded in the software. And that's how you get a chromatogram of uh, mass spec analysis. So yeah, that's it from my side. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Dr. Shivas. The session is open for discussion. Students, if you have any questions, you can ask. No one? <laughs>
in that case, uh, and I would like to thank Dr. Srivastava for joining us today, uh, elaborating the various principles and instrumentations of HPLC and HCMS. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Srivastava. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.